right, so what happens in this process? I'll explain that. Uh, we're using cough because I found this Alex Plus 35 year cough, and it works um, pretty well, and it's cheaper than buying vats of gel silicon, and buying a tub of formaldehyde and mixing the two together. It's a lot cheaper than that, um, which is cool. I hope the latex isn't going to be a problem. That's my only worry with this, but I don't think it will be. Um, no. Oh, no, this stuff's nasty. Archival. Archival. So uh, silicon should be good. Formaldehyde definitely should be good. Latex, I don't know. It should be fine. Uh, They're all okay. flexible materials, so right. they can be right. chemically reversed. Latex is the one, though, that gets hard over time. And that's, I think that's why I worry about mm -hmm. it. All right. So what is, actually happens is you're laying down something that, um, you're laying down something that, um, in fact, you can pass it around the room if you want to see. This stuff's available everywhere. Yes. Uh, what happens is the formaldehyde in the caw takes the ink right off the paper and puts it right in the caw. It's a fantastic process. It actually lifts it off of it. Um, you have to use an inkjet photo paper. But it has to be a matte paper. And it can't be a beard of paper or whatever that thing is that they're bringing over for photography. Um, it has to be like premium presentation matte paper from Epson, but that stuff's really heavy and hard to work with. Uh, this stuff, uh, camera, it's Ink Press, one of their presentation uh, mats. So it's not hard to find this stuff. And this is cheap by the roll if you have a roll printer. Um, so <laughs> what it does, it just takes it right off and then you have to remove the paper. The process is not fast. It's faster on hard surfaces. This piece took me about 142 hours to do because it's on canvas. I'm pushing on canvas. I didn't stretch it afterward. I stretched the canvas first and applied everything to canvas. And, and I, a pro, uh, it's raw canvas also. I refused to gesso. I, I, this is only here because I'm using it for the demo. I did gesso the boards, but I don't gesso canvas ever. I like raw canvas. So. That's probably me talking to the abstract expressions again. So I really like that. Although I don't think they have much to say to us nowadays. Um, but that's my opinion, of course. <laughs> I know, I've, I've already dropped a whole bunch of stuff that probably insults half the week. <laughs> so, all right. How could he not just it? Easy stuff. <laughs> I guess I'll just download it. Yeah. It's super, super simple. We're dying um, of anticipation. I always use pencils because they keep it from going nasty. Uh, nails? Uh, Screws, um, rust. Rust. So you get brown stuff through your car. And this car dries clear. I've used deck screws, and it eats right through the deck coating, but the, the gray coating on the deck screws. And those are those super awesome deck screws. So I don't know what it would do with just the plain old coated ones. Um, so pencils. You might get a little bit of graphite on the tip, but the graphite doesn't break down. So um, a mess here. Do you want some newspaper? I do that. All right, um, real easy. I use a brush, a brayer, paper towels, and I have um, this hydraulic eczema on my hands, so I have to use gloves whenever I do anything. I, I think I aggravated it in when I was getting the film degree, and it's never gone away. Wow. Yeah, they bleed, they peel. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, well, I used to shove my hands right in, right in like everything from side of. Uh, Sign a cryolate to, or no, no, that's super good. From uh, stuff you bleach with to um, selenium toner. I was not smart. All right, that's probably what's wrong with my brain now. So, I put quite a bit out, but the neat thing you, to remember about this is you can put just a little bit out and get pretty cool effects from that. I was going to bring another color one, and the color transfer is really saturated, by the way, so it's not like you lose color at all. It's sort of bright like the ones out there, but maybe a little more so, depending on your substrate. Um, but you can just do thin brush strokes and lay it down on it, bray it down, let it dry, and remove the paper, and you'll get the transfer right into the brush strokes, but nowhere else. And it, it's a really cool process because of that. So I really don't do anything special um, if I'm just doing one like this. Generally. Have you tried it with any other kind of substrate on the paper? Um, or you, you're pretty wet to the pigment. It has to be a pigment print. Um, 
problem is I don't think the die will break down yeah. the same way. Yeah. And it won't let go of... It won't release. It shouldn't. I don't think it will let go of the paper the same way. Yeah. And it, it'll run for sure yeah, once yeah, it hits yeah. this stuff. The wet, so mm -hmm, the wet end. Pig on printer becomes almost mandatory. Um, I haven't tried it. I don't own a die based printer anymore. So I got tired of that thing clogging up all the time. Just got rid of it. So, um, what, make, what make printer do you have? Uh, Action 2400. Yeah. It's the one that does We the can get the one working in. Wonderful black and whites. <laughs> I printed this backwards, mirror image, not like um, flip both ways, but just backwards this way so it'll lay down properly. Um, so you leave a lot on there, don't you? Oh, yeah. It doesn't actually really matter. <laughs> if you do very little, you'll find it peels off easier, too. Silicon's not the most durable thing. Um, it depends on what I'm doing, though. Like, if I'm doing just brush strokes to try to get that effect, yeah, a little bit on there is fine. Um, but you've just watched like the easiest process you could ever do in packaging. I thought you were taking them. Oh, no. Which is why I've tried to make the work not about the process, of course, that I'm doing, but make it more about what I'm trying to do with that process. And that's why I'm going through a measurement with these. There, you let it dry that, for 24 that hours. That doesn't sound very maker like. No, no, it's not about the process. Well, no, it is about the process to some degree. When you see how the, how this. And you think painting is about the process? Uh, it's not about the process. Uh, we can paint around on a really? so Alright, so I know this probably makes the true print makers really angry. How easy that was. <laughs> but that's only part of it. That's just the beginning. This is where things get fun. This is where you have to, have to use gloves if you have any problems at all. And <laughs> All right, because <laughs> it really is this. Is that water? It's just water. Do um, I, I, you use anything else? You're in trouble. It'll it'll eat that chicken right up. And this is where you get creative. You break off the basic part of it. I know this seems way too rough for an obsessive printmaker, but you break off the basic outer shell of it, and I usually let it sit for a couple of minutes so it soaks. The sprayer's not working well. So you understand he's already put the paper down before. Right. I see Carla looking. This is 24 hours later. 24 hours later. That, 24 hours later. So the back of that is... How long can you leave it on there? As long as you want, indefinitely. Because what you've done is you've already dissolved. Well, I shouldn't say dissolve because it doesn't dissolve anything. It, it, gra it releases yeah. the pigment exactly where it was on the paper and keeps it there, you know, a few microns away from the paper. So as you start cleaning off the paper. So most of these inks, you could put them on a rooftop and they'd last longer than the paper. Yeah, it's they'd pretty still amazing. be hugging the rooftop and the paper and <laughs> wash it away. Well, this is this isn't the end of it. Watch. Check out what I'm going to show you. As, as you take off the outer layer, you're left with this film. film of white. And you start working on that. And that's where you have to start being careful because it is a fairly delicate thing. And you can get the neatest effects by rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and causing it to fall apart by rubbing hard. This is where it didn't grip as well. And so you can, you can hit areas like that and actually get them to break off. Um, most of how that looks is intentional. It isn't just from the process. It's looking at each square and saying, I want this to happen, or I want that to happen. Um, so that's where you can get real into it. Now, I will tell you, if you wait longer than 48 hours, it does become a little bit harder to rub the stuff off. But it doesn't increase after that. I usually try to start taking it off on a fast one like this. 24 hours later. Um, but as I said with that one, I was over 140 hours at work. So clearly I didn't, it took me a few weeks to do that. <laughs> so have few. you ever tried to print on top of these, the second layer? Yes, thing? and it works. And that's the other thing about so this. You can do it twice. You can go more than twice. In a place where it's white, if you're putting down thin enough layers, you won't lose much definition. 
And have you tried doing it on papers? It's not canvas? Problem with papers is you have to do so much rubbing that the paper just falls to pieces. Depending on what kind of paper you have. Right, right. If you have paper that's water. Like a 300 pound watercolor paper. So I haven't tried that, but that'd be yeah, neat. Yeah, let's try it together. That I think that could be, be very cool. Yeah, because you're, yeah, that would work actually. Never really thought paper of that. that work for you. So. What do you think, gang? Pretty What's nifty? really nice about it is the definition you get. You don't get any running, you don't get any smearing. And that's what I was interested in when I started doing it. When I saw what the transfer looked like, I couldn't yeah, believe that you didn't lose the detail. But it was all still there. You said the white was where it didn't touch properly, right? Uh, yeah, and I could have gotten this to stay, but I get real rough because I like to see this sort of thing. I really like, I like things that are falling apart a lot. I mean, this one is the worst over here. Well, you can see, I like when accidents happen. I love this. This is where it was too thick, the pop was too thick, and it wrinkled up as it dried, and so it made this wonderful texture. Do you have to seal it afterwards? I don't know. I have and I've been doing it for two years now. So you ever put like varnish over it? I don't know what varnish you can put over silicone. It might be the way. I've been playing with a couple different things. I tried linseed oil, spraying it on, and just letting it set. It does, but um, I'm not sure I'd ever touch it again after that is the problem. What so about just like a liquid fix, you know, varnish? Well, maybe the lights actually yeah, allow you to do it, but this is mostly silicone. So anything you put on it's going to just fall off. So. You that one we've never been able to. That, if you feel that thing, it's super smooth. It's never going to hold anything. Because you're saying you're able to transfer a second image on top of that? Absolutely. That's because the silicon and silicon bind together. And it doesn't reactivate the ink? Um, it probably does, but I've never rubbed hard enough to get down to that level. So. Um, but it, it, it does. It, it, the thing to remember, and, and when you do that, is yeah, they bind together because it's both silicon. But it's not as strong as if it was solid silicon, so if you rub hard enough, it will come to pieces. So it is a layering process. But, you know, we're not trying to create durable things, last I checked, I think. Um, because if I did some of this kind of thing to like one of my paintings or something, it would just be boring. So. <clears throat> but the other thing I really like is this. I'm starting to use this in some of my two dimensional ones and not getting rid of the paper. This mess going on. Does that bother anyone? Yes. <laughs> it bothers some people I know. Like, ah, how do you do that? It's a mess. And my office and my studio are filled with little pieces of paper. <laughs> it gets everywhere. It gets in your hair. <laughs> you make me that mad. Probably. Not. What about the old bars? All this. What's the uh, removal process that comes from anywhere? For me, what are you thinking about? You mean what am I thinking about? What I'm going to see or what am I thinking about?